So how much money does the BBC raise from the licence fee each year? The answer is a staggering £3.6 billion. Well, that's right, uh, £3.6 billion total budget. Only half of that goes to Jonathan Ross. Uh, joke. Uh, you're watching The Right Stuff live on Five with Kay Adams, Terry Christian and special guest MasterChef finalist Ewan Thomas. <laughs> I bet you never thought I'd say that on television. Uh, still to come, uh, do men only live to get girls? Does everything a fella thinks and does have an ulterior motive to get his end away? Uh, surely... Surely there's more to us blokes That's than not that. That's a nice expression well, to get his end away. But you catch my drift. <laughs> yeah. 027 173 double five double five is the number if you've got something to say. Uh, first, though, BBC expenses. Are they out of control? Should we be outraged by Sunday Times revelations that suggest the corporation is just as big a fan of the gravy train as those sitting in the House of Commons? Uh, a league table of the uh, biggest public sector pensions reveals two BBC bods, Mark Byford and Alan Yentov, are in first and second place in line for a bigger pension than even Mervyn King, Governor of the Bank of England, can expect, with a combined pension pot worth £14 million. Now, the Sunday Times, proprietor Rupert Murdoch, owner of Sky Television, uh, got the scoop after the BBC initially released only personal expenses claimed by individual employees. And insiders of the Beeb suggested lots more Ekkies have been put down in the BBC's name under a central booking, se booking system. And now we know, as a result of that, that a leaving due for former Director General John Burt could have cost as much as £150,000 of our money. There was this massive party at Hampton Court Palace, apparently, and then a studio event as well, hosted by Stephen Fry. No wonder Bert described it in his autobiography as a splendid send-off. I imagine it probably <laughs> was. Though, a BBC spokesman insisted the real cost was much lower, as Auntie can get a deal on venue hire and so on. I am relieved. Uh, the paper, nevertheless, uh, lists several other costly leaving dues. And then there's the £14 million the Beeb spent on taxis. That's more than £38,000 a day on taxis. Now, certainly the BBC relies on taxis to get guests, guests in and out of studios, but is £14 million a year too much? Is it fair that BBC stalwarts like uh, Bruce Forsyth and Sir Terry Wogan have been asked to take pay cuts when executives are blowing so much of the BBC's budget on parties, taxis, and pensions, Terry. Oh, I think they do a marvellous job. Yeah. The BBC, <laughs> and um, I don't see any waste of money whatsoever there. All the years that I've worked for them. Um, no, I mean, I mean, it's just a strange one because it's such a big, unwieldy civil yes, service is. type vehicle, yeah. and you, you've got people. You know, it's very hard to get on BBC staff, and yet. The people who do tend to get on staff at the BBC aren't really bolt rockers as such. And, you can know, you imagine, can you imagine the outrage? Can you imagine the outrage if, amongst MPs' expenses, we found that Labour grandees had organised a £150,000 party for John Prescott? Can you imagine how annoyed people would be? Well, I, th I think because, it, you know, they are funded by the public, they've got to go public on what people get paid. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they've, they've got to hold the hands up on that one. Also, but then, because it's such a big organisation, often, you know, each little part of the BBC gets run as an independent fiefdom, almost, and they're not really answerable unless something goes horribly wrong. And, and they, they're in ridiculous situations, money-wise, whereby... I mean, I mean, there's a thing that... There's a guy who does, does a, a national radio show and he flies from Belfast to Manchester, stays two, night in a, two nights in a hotel to do his show from Manchester, just to say, look, we're doing a show from the regions. Mm. You might as well just do it from Belfast and, bang, they've saved at least yeah. 30 grand a year there. Um, you know, if they need a new potted plant for an office, they can't just go out and buy a yucca plant for £25 or a table lamp for 25 quid. They have this company they go to and they supply one, but we can't charge you less than 150 It's all sort of strange things like that on top of the expenses. Mm. Mm, it doesn't make good reading, does it, though, to read about pension pots that are bigger than the, it doesn't, but the head of the Bank of England? It doesn't, see the bigger picture here, and I'm not defending it at all, though I yeah, do yeah. think no, the no, BBC is a fabulous could do with the gig. <laughs> yes, and I do, and I think... It's you know, not us saying it, it's Matthew. <laughs> right. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying, I, too, think the BBC is a wonderful organisation. <laughs> and and the, the cultural tapestry of this country would be so much... But anyway, so, but we've got to see the bigger picture here. You know, we do not live in an egalitarian society. You know, we have to debate whether we want to. We live in a society that uh, endorses privilege. These are very, very privileged people. Mm. But even if you talk about their pension pot, I mean... It the is pot, publicly funded, hang on, though. The pot is, is a different funded. thing. 
The pot is a different thing. What they're getting a year is something like 200 and odd thousand, 216,000 mm. Alan Yentov's going to get when he retires. Now, that is a phenomenal amount of money that anyone in the country would bite your arm off for. But it is two thirds of final pension, which is a fairly standard equation within mm. the public sector. He's worked there for about 300 years. Mm. You know, he's been there for a long, long time. He's yeah. 62 now. God knows you know, what he's leaving, do okay, cost. He's won a watch. So, in terms of the pension, I think you've got to look at it okay. separately. The party's leaving dues? They, and again, I'm not justifying <laughs> it, but they live within the television world. If ITV decided no, uh, to well, give... You're missing the point. The BBC does not live within the television no, world because it is not... It is a publicly it. funded organisation that is I spending know. tens of thousands of pounds on our money and then having a party. I OK. No, no, I'm not, I'm not depending, but they will see themselves as living in a television world. They will see themselves in terms of the executives Maybe that they, they employ to down to Earth. competing within the commercial world because they want the same creative, dynamic people that might be attracted to the commercial world and so they operate on their kind of I mean ironically ITV you'd be lucky come to, get to the BBC sandwich, no, you'll you? get a great leaving do <laughs> she keeps looking at me trying to be all sincere <laughs> I don't believe a word you're okay. saying you and what do you think I just can't believe the figure you said was 38 grand a day yeah on, on taxes, taxes. That must be that's, one, that's, one of, that's one of the figures that I think I can actually understand. It's yeah, a huge organisation. No, you've had your say. You didn't want to criticise. Come on, you. That's what's your look. Well, you know, once again, I've, worked, I've worked with the BBC as well, and they're fantastic, aren't they? But, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's difficult because, you know, if I do something for BBC, I'm not going to complain when they send a nice shiny car to pick no. me up. But you've got to see the other point of view. You know, that's a lot of money to be spending. But I wouldn't mind going to a party. Leaving dues? Yeah. You don't mind the party? Yeah, I'll, go, I'll go to one of those. But no, that's, a, that's crazy money. Um, oh, no, be, be and if you were a again. BBC presenter, if you're a Bruce Forsyth who watches the show, which is, which is uh, this show, which is fantastic, Bruce Forsyth has provided entertainment to millions of people for generations. He's asked to take a pay cut while his lords and masters within the BBC are revelling in champagne parties. No, I Doesn't seem fair. I mean, Bruce Forsyth, uh, Bruce Forsyth is a lovely man, but I don't care about Bruce Forsyth's wages. I care about all the researchers and no, all no, the people no, at Bruce, lower Bruce levels Forsyth, in the BBC Bruce Forsyth, that have been asked to take a Bruce 15 Forsyth quid a front, week cut. Without Bruce Forsyth presenting these shows as the big draw, draw that he is, there may not be any jobs for researchers. You could fund that, all no, those researchers no. by reducing the parties alone. If the no. parties went alone, there'd be enough money to fund Every research All I'm saying is you should concentrate more on the people who really make up the BBC, and there's lots of people within the BBC and other organisations who've been asked to take a £50 pay cut yeah. a week, which will mean the difference between them paying their mortgage and not. Yeah. And that's the real scandal. OK, OK. Well, uh, you're getting louder now. Let's throw it open to you. Do we feel the BBC is, uh, is uh, abusing uh, expenses? Let's see what you've got to say, Kirsty. Uh, first, we have Gaynor on line one. Uh, morning, Gaynor. Hi there. Hi there. Uh, what do you think? I think they, 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 they don't just abuse expenses, that they... They abuse the whole license system, and even though, you know, they have multi merchandising and they sell programs abroad and they make a fortune from books and DVDs and everything, I think that they um, they kind of spoil their staff. Um, I used to work for Radio Five Live, and I had um, a TV on my desk. I used to watch your show in the morning when I was at work, and I was a PA for the head of news. I had right. a a block on my desk that had a, a mini disc that had a digital receiver. But you might I could need pick up this any stuff. Radio station. You, but you might need this stuff for work. I didn't really though. I just I really enjoyed it, but I didn't need it. I didn't work. <laughs> okay. So what are you saying that we need uh, closer scrutiny? Of I it? think so. I think the fact that you know I used to um, send my boss over for meeting. I worked at Television Centre, and I used to send my boss over for meetings at Broadcasting House. We were in White City. We had a tube station directly outside of our office. We'd stick them in a cab for 20 quid a shot, you know, and that was six years ago, so I don't know what it would cost now. I mean, I think Five Live taxi bills are, you know, thousands of pounds a year, and that, uh, that's just wrong. So there, there, are, there are cuts that could be made? Yes. Okay. We used to have um, wine and beer at 4 o'clock in the evening on Fridays. We'd stop working, we'd play football TV, you know, we'd all congregate and watch the plasma screens, watch MTV, including sounds, the controller. Sounds hellish, absolutely hellish. Uh, this is all in a day's work. Oh, it's taxing, really. Taxing. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, Gaynor, thank you. Let's have another. Elizabeth's on line three. Elizabeth, good morning. Good morning, Matthew. Are, are you shocked or outraged by anything you've heard or read in the no, Sunday Times? No, I'm not. I, I like BBC. I've loved BBC since I was a child. Yeah. And uh, I, I hate to think that I don't know, maybe people like Rupert Murdoch, who wants to have the control of, of all our media, is, is behind a lot of this. I don't think they should be, um, BBC should necessarily have the lavish expenses. But again, I'm talking on behalf of a listener and a viewer. And I like most of what BBC does. 
Is it, is it fair, yeah. Elizabeth, is it fair that uh, presenters, researchers, are uh, being asked to take pay cuts? Well, this is something I didn't know about, and uh, it probably isn't, and maybe that should be sorted out. But on the whole, I think that maybe just by telling them to, come on, sort yourself out, I mean, people across the board are being asked to take cuts, but not the bankers. We, we're taking our eye away from the bankers. We've had yeah, drip, a drip, drip of MPs' expenses for months and not going on about... The, we've heard of this acronym now, BABS. Uh, Elizabeth, so uh, back. I totally uh, agree with you on that score, that the real villains of the piece seem to be carrying on with their evil, duplicitous life of making themselves rich uh, and doing all these complex financial strategies that time and time again, we've been told, don't work for us. And I think it's true, MPs' expenses now, but BBC expenses are taking their eyes people. off the wall. They're the same people, aren't they? MPs, the senior strata of the BBC, yeah. the bankers, the people who managed to get into that privileged yeah. golden circle, yeah. you know, yeah. and there's lots of them. Yeah. OK, uh, thanks for that last call, Elizabeth. Nice one. Uh, after the ads, we're asking if men only live, only exist to get girls. Does everything a fella thinks... Why are you laughing every time I say that, Kirsten? So uh, true. Does everything a fella thinks and does have this ulterior motive uh, to park Percy somewhere else? Uh, is that better for you, that euphemism? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying my best here. Uh, men apparently need to be successful at something, at anything, really, uh, in order to catch the attention of ladies uh, so that you'll let us make babies together. Is that all the proof you need, that that's what men exist for, to, to make you girls happy, to give you babies? What if, what if we don't want to make babies, us blokes? Where, what about us then? Oh, 0207-173-5555 is the number of your thoughts. Do guys only live for girls? You tell me in three. According to a leading neuroscientist, how often do men consciously think about sex? Every seven seconds, every 30 seconds, or every 52 seconds?